I had recently done a video where I took the Condor Bush Buddy, brought the edge thinner and thinner until it eventually ended up with no apex bevel at all, did some rather hard utility cutting with it to examine where the edge failed as a point of discussion about how thick do you actually need an apex bevel and what is the limit of angle that you need to keep the edge free of damage because the minimum edge thickness and the minimum edge angle gives you maximum cutting ability maximum ease of sharpening minimum fatigue maximum control and overall maximum pleasure and comfort in using a knife now using a similar group of materials I examined six other knives and I'm going to relatively quickly go through uh, the performance in the description there's much more numbers and much more detail this is an extrema ratio fulcrum again the primary grind has been flattened straight to the apex this is an 11 degree per side bevel it has a 13 degree per side micro bevel it went through all the cutting with extremely minimal damage almost no effect even on the can cutting a couple of comments about the knife uh, extremely thick blade, very heavy solid lockup, secondary locking mechanism, which means you can't accidentally release this. The handle shape looks incredibly silly. Uh, however, it's actually so big, and these are all relatively well rounded, that it's not uncomfortable. And even the pocket clip you can see is very wide. So, it's not as bad as you might think. I'm not going to go as far and say this is an ergonomic handle, but it's not the nightmare that you think that it might be. That's all that I would say. So if you have a chance to check one of these out, it's kind of an interesting brood of a knife to have a look at. This is a Spider Coast Salt. Um, it's very well used. All of these knives are. They're all between five and seven years old. Again, primary grind has been flattened straight down uh, to the edge. This is at six and a half degrees per side with a 10 degree uh, micro bevel. This took very minimal edge damage only on the can cutting and it was only some deformation and rolling. And this steel is very easy to grind so this will come out very easy. Uh, a couple of comments about the knife. You can see it's very well worn. The clip is being polished smooth. Uh, it does have uh, a bit of side to side play and a little bit of up and down rock and the blade has actually drifted a bit off the lock bar but again this is a very heavily used knife uh, it's over seven years old I've used it my brothers use it I've given it to a number of friends you can even see where the edge has been ground down significantly very nice knife of course completely corrosion proof because of the characteristics of the steel which is H1 and this is of course patterned on the classic uh, Endora line uh, Spider Co Delica in ZDP 189 again the edge was fully flattened uh, this has uh, the same edge angle of 6.5 degrees per side with a 10 degree micro bevel this took about twice as much damage as the salt and a chipped uh, fracture so uh, resharpening on this is going to be a bit of a chore because I have twice as much damage as on the salt and the grindability of the steel is much lower so it'll take about five times as long to get the damage out of this one as it will on the salt and this of course is one of the areas when you think about matching a steel to what you're actually doing ZDP 189 is a very high wear steel it doesn't have a very high edge stability and again what I'm talking about it has a lot of fracture I'm talking about fracture that's occurring at a thickness of a steel of around one thousandth of an inch that's the part of thickness that's actually fracturing and what's happening there is you're seeing fracture in these steel because that's the size of the carbide aggregates that are in it. And steel can stay stable in cross sections that are of the order of the carbide aggregates because there's no actual steel around the big chunks of the carbides to hold them in place. Uh, a couple of comments about this knife. Again, this is a very heavily used knife. Uh, classic pattern. Uh, this is a Delica. Uh, I only think a couple, two things I don't like about this. I don't like this sort of little mini choil here it doesn't serve a lot of functional purpose but again this is a very classic I mean this is essentially one of the 
most recognizable Spyderco uh, designs. But again, I don't like that. And I don't like these clips that Spyderco uses in general. They're not overly ergonomic. I like the wire clips uh, that they use. But if you take this clip off, it's actually a relatively nice, very ergonomic handle. And some people do like this little space for doing precise work, and I can sort of understand that. I don't do that with this knife, but if you do, that's a nice feature. And of course, everything else, ease of one hand and opening. Very nice knife, and ZDP 189 is a very nice stainless steel uh, where you're doing high wear applications. This is a bird, which is a sister company of Spyderco. You can see it's patterned after the Delica. I do like, you can see how they actually have a full choil here rather than a small part on a Delica, so this is actually functional. I do like this as an improvement of the Delica, actually. Um, the angle on this is slightly less, it's 5 degrees per side, so this angle here is actually 30% uh, percent higher and both these knives ended up taking the same amount of damage in the same sort of manner uh, this was uh, mainly chipping with a little bit of deformation and so this only managed to have the same amount of damage even though the edge was 30% uh, thicker which would make it 60% stronger and 90% stiffer which shows you the effect that a lower carbide steel can have because the angle on this was reduced by 30 percent and still retained the same amount of damage as on the Delica and ZDP 189 and this is a PM steel and this is a regular ingot steel so you have a regular ingot steel at a 30 percent reduced edge angle and still have the same level of durability and again that's because it has a much lower carbide volume and of course the grindability is much higher here so this will sharpen out uh, several times as fast as the ZDP 189 Delica. Again, very heavily used knife, really nice small utility knife. This is a Chris Reeves Sebenza. Again, this is around seven years old. Uh, like all Chris Reeves knives, it has it's put together at a very high level of precision. The action, the tightness, the security and function of this blade is really no different now than it was when I first got it. There's no blade play in any direction. It's very smooth. However, as an actual knife, it's one of the worst performers out of all of these. The handle is completely unergonomic. It's very rectangular. Uh, the clip is very squarish. Uh, these grooves cut in here, which are tractions that operates the lock, uh, bites into your hand. It's just not at all nice to actually work with. One of the things that I find curious is that the spine on this is really well rounded. That's not the curious part. But many other things are left very squarish, which reduces the ergonomics. Chris Sands ships these with a primary hollow grind. This was flattened completely based down to reduce it to the minimum edge angle that I could get on the knife again to maximize the cutting ability. Uh, this had a 4.5 uh, degree edge with again a 10 degree uh, micro bevel. It took the heaviest damage out of the lot so much you can easily see big chunks of it just breaking out by eye. I've never had very good success with this knife since I bought it it chips and gets damaged at much easier levels than other knives with similar angles. And again, the grindability of S30V is not overly high, so it will take some time uh, to grind these out. But I mean, no big issue with the uh, right stones. This is the Kershaw uh, Vapor in AUS6A. Uh, it was fully flattened. It has a very, very slight apex bevel, which starts at around 25 thousandths and is around 5 degrees per side. And that apex bevel is only formed just because of the slight hollow that comes into stones during hand sharpening. And I only noticed it when I did my startup measurements on it. You can't see it by eye, but if you do put a set of calipers on it, you can see there is a transition bevel at around 25 thousandths. Uh, this is very heavily used. It has some up and down play where the tang of the blade compressed the spring in the liner or integral part of the lock that's very common on liner locks and integrals in general because the lock bar actually rides right against the tang so it directly takes loads uh, on the lock which is one of the most idiotic ways you can design a lock because loads that come on the knife go directly on the lock bar itself in a compressive force to have wear on it but it's a very common lock design um, Again, I've had issues with this knife, just like the Sabenza from when I got it. The edge chipped really bad originally uh, when I was sharpening it, which is a sign it's been heavily overheated. Even after that went away, the edge would burr prominently during sharpening, and it's very difficult to get a clean edge to form on it. You need to have the stones ultra clean 
very flat and use extremely light force uh, to minimize or prevent actually excessive burr formation. Uh, the edge retention on this is extremely pitiful. Uh, this was the only knife that couldn't even do the wood cutting. On the hardwood, as you can see in the thumbnail, it collapsed almost immediately and the entire edge just folded over to the other side. Now, of course, again, this is where some people can sort of have a look at this and say, hey, wait now, you changed this from the factory grind. This is only at 5 degrees per side. Yeah, well, so were the other knives. That was the point of this. So when these were all reduced down, this failed at a level far beyond what the other ones did. I don't, this is not, by the way, indicative of AUS-6A as a steel. It's a very good low carbide stainless steel. If you want a steel that's sort of maximized for edge stability over wear resistance, it's a very tough steel. Uh, the problem is, however, uh, as this is in a very inexpensive knife and it's a very inexpensive steel, it tends to get very inexpensive heat treatment. So because this is both chipping at the edge and it's also very weak, you're looking at something like most likely it has high levels of retained austenite which are being transformed to untempered martensite uh, during the work, uh, plus the fact the grain was probably uh, blown during heat treatment, so it's a bit large, which again makes it weak uh, and brittle. Other than that, like if you ignore the problems with the blade uh, steel, it's a relatively functional small knife. Um, and again, the lock has suffered some direct compaction, but that's not a functional problem with this knife specifically. That's just the nature of liner and integral locks. If you do use them heavily, the forces from the blade will tend to act completely right on. Uh, the liner, which is one of the reasons why you have to be very careful to make sure you have decent engagement, because if you only have very, very thin partial engagement and you use the knife heavily, you'll just snap the face right off the liner or lock bar.